Today we're going to talk about scrub radius and how modifying your car affects it. So what scrub radius is, is the distance between the center of the tire contact patch where it hits the road and the geometric axis from the upper suspension attachment point to the lower suspension attachment point on the upright has an imaginary line drawn between the two of them and it contacts the ground and the distance between where the tire center is and that is called scrub radius. What that basically does is it's leverage the tire has, the suspension is steering point is inboard and the tires out here, and when you hit a bump or a change in asphalt or any kind of traction change, it actually pulls the steering wheel in your hands and gives you feedback. It's a good thing. The car companies actually tune the scrub radius deflection by the amount of bushing density the suspension has in it so that when you hit a bump, it moves, but it doesn't move too much. And they do this because they know what the friction of the tire is, they know what the offset is, they know how much power the car has, and do a very careful calculation. In the front, what happens is the tension compression rod, the diagonal rod that goes to the front, will actually change the wheelbase of the car and the caster as you hit bumps and change the road, will actually cause the car to dart back and forth, and you can use the steering wheel to hold it in place. In the rear, there's tow links, and the tow links have rubber in them, plus the arms are usually curved and they have a little deflection in the metal itself. And it, what they do is they tune it so that when you lift off the gas entering the corner, there's a slight reduction in understeer so the car will rotate into the corner, and then when you step on the throttle, the distortion in the bushings and the flexing arm tows the loaded wheel in and causes a little bit of understeer to make the car stable on the way out of the corner. So this is a good thing, and they've spent a lot of time on it. Now we come in, we modify our car, and we put wider wheels and tires on it. When we put wider wheels and tires on it, obviously they can't hit the suspension, so we have to move them out. And when we move them out, the scrub radius increases. The problem with this is the rubber bushings in the suspension system were designed for the stock wheels and tires, and now we've created a lot more force, a lot more leverage. So now we hit bumps in the front and the rubber bushing distorts a lot more and the car darts around fairly violently. And the rear, we actually get a toe change that's so great from the bushing deflection that it feels like somebody's in the trunk steering the car. It makes the car very uncontrollable. Now, if we add power to the car by increasing the boost in our turbo or a bigger engine, now we have more forward thrust in the rear. Now we have more scrub radius with the tire with more leverage and we have more power forced against it and what happens is the car becomes very uncontrollable, very unstable. So how do we fix this? So this is the rear tow link that fits both the F80 and the G80 M3, M4, as well as the M2 comp, and likely the new M2 comp that's coming out. What we do is we take the rubber out, we make the arm straight, so the arm doesn't flex as much, and we actually put a bearing in the end, so the deflection is lower. This is designed to compensate for the extra scrub radius in the car. Makes the car very stable, very easy to control. The other thing it does is the rubber bushing actually has a spring rate to it. And when the suspension moves up and down, the spring energy in the rubber actually acts like uh, a stiffer suspension system. So the bearing actually turns free. That's why we put them in race cars. And it actually improves ride quality because as the car can move up and down over bumps because the car is literally not as stiff. Um, the side effect of it and why they put rubber in to start with is when you're going forward and you hit um, reflectors or cracks in the road or expansion joints in the, in the concrete, it transmits some noise through the bearing into the car that the rubber would absorb, and that's why the rubber was originally put there. Now, the increase in noise is not very much, particularly in the rear, by the way. This is the rear part. It's hard to notice in the rear. You notice it more in the front. Uh, and it can't be too bad because my wife is my gauge of what is good and what is bad from a ride quality and noise standpoint. She thinks the ride quality is noticeably better, and she thinks the noise is only a little bit worse. And so she believes it's a good compromise and she's a judge of that sort of thing. Uh, if you want to get some more information about the product, you go to carbon.com. And we're gonna do a future video on the front monoball and how that affects the front. Thanks for watching, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we're gonna do these weekly with technical updates on how to modify your car successfully and have it still be a nice street car when you're done.